Hey folks, welcome to TA Outdoors. Bit of a special announcement episode, uh, which is something I don't usually do on the channel. I just wanted to give you a quick overview on my new bushcraft backpack that I'm gonna be using for my camping overnight trips and just general bushcraft activities. This is the TA Trekker. It's been over a year in the making. I've had about three prototypes and myself and Brian from Journeyman Homecrafts have finally come up with a design that we're really pleased with. It's all handmade in Britain, every pack. Uh, there is a limited supply, so we're gonna test the water, see how it goes. If you guys enjoy them, then we'll make some more. They come in two colors. You've got a kind of forest brown color and the olive green. The overall design of them is quite simple. They're just a bucket style bag in the middle. So one pocket with a small back pocket as well for things like maps or if you're carrying a grill or anything like that. Take a look at the green one first and then I'll give you guys a close up of the brown. First thing you'll notice is that on the front, you've got the TA Trekker patch. This is an embroidered patch that's sewed on. Um, you can obviously add your other patches to it if you want, but that's the patch on the front. So in terms of the material, it's made from UV coated uh, and PU coated Cordura. So it's incredibly durable, uh, good for sharp objects and just general hard wear and tear. It's also double layered and you'll see that in a minute with the lid. So it's got Cordura on the outside and the lining on the inside. Uh, the material itself is waterproof, but the bag, the bag is classed as water resistant, um, obviously after stitching, things like that, but you'd be pretty safe with it in, uh, in rain. The webbing itself is British military grade, uh, as well as the clips as well, they're military grade. The stitching on the pack is really good, I'm quite impressed with it, and it's bonded nylon, which is abrasive resistant and also rot resistant, so it's going to make it uh, very durable and that's what I wanted with this bag was something that was incredibly durable it can take a lot of hard wear and tear as I will be using this as my daily pack on all my filming trips. The overall size of the bag we wanted it to be roughly 25 litres and we, we almost got there it's basically 20, 20 litre main compartment uh, but you can extend the lid up obviously and store more in it. Uh, these side pouches are about one and a half litres each uh, so roughly 23, 24 litres, which is what I wanted for a day pack. On the front of the webbing here, you have some Velcro, which just helps stow away your webbing so that it's not dangling around all over the place like this. All you need to do is you can just roll it up and then fold the webbing over, put the Velcro over, and it just keeps it stowed away so that it's not getting in the way. And then on the back here, you have a, an adjustable sternum strap, which can slide up and down. Again, a British military grade clip there. You've got a tensioning straps here to adjust your shoulder straps with some Velcro there just to keep the webbing attached. You also have some D-rings or D-loops which you can attach carabiners to if you wish. The shoulder straps themselves are really important for me. Uh, I did want padding on them, but sometimes uh, too much padding can be a little bit too restrictive. And then down at the bottom here, I've asked Brian to reinforce all the stitching lower down and also cross stitch and reinforce the stitching up here as they're the two main wear points of the bag. So these are reinforced stitching on the shoulder straps to give it extra durability. You've got some breathable mesh here on the back and inside that is some small foam padding to keep the bag's rigidity and to make it more comfortable on your back. So with this pack, what we did is we made it a bit more rigid and gave it some structure so that when you pick it up and put it down, it stays upright and it doesn't kind of roll all over the place. You can just place it down and obviously get to all your bits inside. I just felt that was really important for me. Uh, it's just, it's a small thing I know guys, it's pretty petty, but I, I, I really like my backpacks and that was something that was, uh, that I really wanted with the pack was to be able to stand on the floor and have it set up right so that I can get into the things nice and easily. Just one more thing we'll look at before we go onto the inside of the pack. So it's a bit muddy and wet today, so you might see a bit mud over the pack, but that's because it's gonna get used. Underneath here, we've got some molly webbing and I really wanted to be able to have space to put tents, sleeping bags, tarps on the underside of the pack. That was really important for this. So we made it so that this, this webbing on the front is fully adjustable and you can hold the clip, pull it through, and do it both sides. And that allows you to have two big loops at the bottom where you can fit a tent underneath like that or a tarp and you can just hang it just underneath and I've tested out the Polish Levy which is a canvas tent that I love using it's fairly big when it's rolled up and that fits under here and that again was really important for me so adjustable webbing that also allows you to store tents and tarps underneath the bottom of the bag so before we go on the inside of the pack I'll just show you quickly 
the side pouches. Like I said, these are one and a half litre side pouches uh, with YKK zips here and a little zip pull, so they're nice and quick to open. And then, for example, here is a one litre Nalgene bottle. That slips in perfectly and it zips up, no problem. So there's actually room. That one litre Nalgene bottle is there. There's still room above it to, to fit some more inside this. I tend to keep my water bottles on the outside, but I'll show you how I pack all this bag uh, later down the line. It also has a carrying D-loop here at the top, which again has strong stitching so that you can hang it up with heavy gear inside. Number of features here. Uh, the first one is the opening is a draw cord with reinforced webbing and rivets here. You'll also notice that on the inside back, there's a made in Britain flag and uh, obviously Brian, journeyman handcrafts who helps hand make these packs. Uh, that is his little design logo there. At the front, before we go inside, there is a sleeve here for an ax or a hatchet. So you can slide your ax down there and you also have this loop which you slide your ax through and that stops it wobbling. Then you have two fairly large front pockets. So all this together with the side pouches makes the pack about 25 litres because you've got these extra pockets here. Uh, they're just really ideal, really useful to be able to get things out quickly without having to go into the bag itself. Now if I, before I turn the, go inside the pack, if I turn it round, there are two elastic straps that are reinforced and stitched on the inside lining of the bag. What this allows is, for example, you to store any gear that you want to get to quickly. I normally store hoodies or raincoats. I roll them up and I store them under here, or a shamag if I need to use it as a towel or to put gear on. But for example, here is a Thermarest Neo Air Xtherm, and that can slide in there no problem. And that webbing keeps it attached, so it's on the inside of your lid. So it's just for anything that you need to get quick access to, that's what that webbing's for. Generally for me, I designed it for clothing. So your shell layer, your outer shell layer, or your waterproof raincoat or something like that. Inside a bag is really simple. It's just a bucket pouch, a bucket bag. So one big opening there, and then a small opening at the back for things like maps. If you wanted to add extra foam in, you can. I don't personally need to, it's all fairly supported back there. But maps, flat things like grills, cooking grills, or uh, plates or anything, cutlery and things like that. So that's what that's for. The rest of the bag is just a nice, I really wanted it nice and simple on the inside because you've got these pockets on the outside for your features. That's the green bag. We'll take a look at the brown bag. Everything on the brown is exactly the same layout. What I really like about this pack is that <laughs> actually the color of it is really quite unique. So we've got olive green webbing. This one has olive green pack and then a light olive green webbing and it's green, light green on the back. And this one is quite unique, the brown, it's different. It does have the light olive green webbing, so the same as the green pack. On the back, we have the gold breathable mesh back panel um, and the olive green, I just find think it really contrasts well against the brown. So just to show you, the green pack has a kind of uh, cream, beige cream interior and the brown pack has gold. Again, the rest of the style, the Pax is exactly the same style. It's just different colouring depending on your preference. So that is the TA Trekker, my new day pack, which I'm really pleased to bring you guys. I hope you do enjoy it if you manage to get one. We've done a really limited supply. Uh, we're not going to get any more until after Christmas and into next year now. Uh, but for those who are interested, taoutdoors.com. Um, I'll put some links in the video description below as well. One more thing before I go, there is some extra accessories that you can get for these and this is something that's making it truly unique which myself and brian are really proud of these are what i call the pack pouch they're pack pouches the idea is that these have been specially designed to fit perfectly in a modular system inside the ta trekker itself so the measurements to these will make them fit nice and flush, especially this large one. And they just give you the added, the added option of having basically a possibles pouch. I'll quickly show you the ones that we have at the moment and then ones that we've got coming out in the future. You've got the large pack pouch, which essentially goes down the whole bottom of the pack of the TA Trekker. Then you have the medium pack pouch and these are all olive green with black on the top and then we also have some brown ones to go with the brown TA Trekker pack. 
And then there is the small pack pouch here. You've got some little handhelds on each side so that you can open them nice and quick. And inside is just one large pouch with a little bit of mesh storage up here with some elastic to keep it nice and firm. You could put whatever you want in here, fire lighting kit, um, your coffee brew kit. The idea is that these ones, these the, the two sizes, small and medium, are not rigid, so they can compress, which I wanted. So, you know, if you didn't put further out, you could put half in there and then they would compress down in your bag to allow you to pack more into your bag. Whereas if this was fully rigid, like this, it's gonna take up a lot of space in your bag and you'd have to end up filling this. So for the moment, we might bring out a rigid version down the line, but for the moment, I wanted it to be not as rigid so that you can compress down, so that if you didn't fill it up, you could still get more storage in your pack. That's the small one. This is the medium one. Again, exactly the same style, except with the medium one, you have the mesh webbing, the mesh liner, sorry, that is split into two smaller pockets, but again, one large main pocket there that's the medium and then the large is slightly different in that the edges are actually reinforced to give it a bit more rigidity and that's because it would just bend and flop over a bit too much being a slightly larger pouch so this one same principle but you have a different lining inside it's double layered it's got some rigidity in it and it does have two mesh pockets here at the top as well for storage again you could store things like paracord uh, your knives, you could potentially fit a small hatchet in there as well if you wanted to, depending on the size. So there's one more pouch that's not been released yet, but we spent a lot of time designing this and it's something that I think a lot of you YouTube guys out there who, loads of people who follow my channel also have bushcraft and outdoor camping channels. And I thought it was really important because a lot of us take camera gear out with us and often don't have much to store it in. We either carry it on our tripods out in the open but not ideal when you're going on a long hike because it can get quite heavy and cumbersome and you want to be able to have your camera in your pack. So protect it, to protect it, we have the camera pack pouch. Take a look at this. The camera pack pouch is totally reinforced around all the sides, the bottom and the top with padding. It has a little carrying loop here at the top, which has reinforced stitching so that you can pull it in and out of the bag nice and easily. Same style as the other pack pouches, but inside you have mesh, Storage at the top here, which I tend to put charging cables, um, lens filters, etc. Down here, you have your main compartment, which is has Velcro around the edges. This is a, to give you an idea of scale, this is a Canon 80D, which is a fairly big DSLR. And that fits in there like that. I can store two extra lenses. And then we have these dividers and you can get these as an optional. They'll, the pack will come with two anyway, but you can get optional extras if you wish to. For example, here I put my GoPro and my camera batteries as well. So this I'm really excited about. We spent a lot of time designing this. Um, so it's all, all stable and reinforced to fit in your pack. So we'll start with, this is showing you the modular system that it has. We'll start with the camera pouch here. This is perfectly measured so that it fits very flush inside the pack. So I'll push that down and that's now in there at the bottom. And then above that, I'm going to put the large pack pouch. Again, that fits nice and flush. It's the same, pretty much the same dimensions as the other one. So that fits nice and flush on top of there. And then I think we'll put two small pack pouches side by side. Again, these side by side measure the same as the long pack pouch. So they fit in like that. And then we finish it off with one of the medium pack pouches and that can just sit in the middle and I've still got a little bit of extra room here. So that just gives you an idea, fits flush to the top of the TA Trekker pack and the lid can just go on and it's all perfectly in there. It's all modular and that's what I really wanted to add. The bonus to this pack was the option to have a modular packing system. So again, to get it out, really easy, open that, you've got Medium pack pouch, two small pack pouches. If you can see that there, your large pack pouch. And then the camera pouch, this is why we put a uh, carrying loop on the top, is to help you get it out, because it's obviously going to be heavier. You can just pull on that loop and there you go. That comes out of the bag. So these come in brown and the green to go with your TA Trekker pack. So that's it. The packs are now available to pre-order. 
or depending on when you watch this, they might be out already. But just head on over to tootdoors.com, link in the description. Um, you can either get the pack pouches separate if you want and you don't want the bag, you know, just use them as a, a pack pouch. You can get them individually or you can get them as a bundle of the three different pouches. And you can then also get, if you're really keen, a full loadout, which is obviously going to be cheaper, which is TA Trekker with the full pack pouches, not the camera one yet because that's not out, but that's a full gear loadout if you're interested in that one and you want to go full ham on it all, <laughs> then it's up to you, but there's links in the description to everything. One more thing I want to show you. So this is the start essentially of my journey into bringing out my own branded bushcraft and camping gear, which has always been a, a dream of mine. And I've been really excited about this for the past couple of years. I've been thinking about ideas in my head and now it's all coming to fruition. So it's really a kind of a new chapter, a new adventure for me. Um, another thing that we've got designed with Brian is my foraging pouch here, which just is, is really small, which is really small when it's packed up like that. And it can sit on your belt. There's a belt loop, it sits on your belt. And when you undo it, it folds out into a really nice waxed canvas foraging pouch and I'll pop links in the description to this as well but this is a really really nice handmade item all of this is handmade in Britain guys the packs this these pouches also my friend Tim from Blue Angelical makes we've made these canvas pack seats together the TA Outdoors pack seat folds into a triangle you can unfold it you lash three sticks together you make a tripod and then you've got a seat these are handmade in Britain. I've really tried to focus on Britain, you know, and, and, and trying to get things handmade here in Britain because it's so easy now to go abroad and get things done really, really cheap and, you know, kind of make a huge profit markup on it, really. And I just, I wanted to try and bring back the great British manufacturing side of things and try and help out the smaller guys, the smaller businesses. Brian is not a huge company. He's, a, he's just the guy, he, he's just got a workshop in his back garden that he makes these packs and it's the same with Tim. And I just wanna try and bring back and help out those smaller British businesses um, and just collaborate together to come up with these really cool designs for you guys. So yeah, I, I know it's not a really decent video in terms of bushcraft camping and, and things like that. And this isn't gonna be a regular thing, full reviews on my channel. Um, but if you follow TA Outdoor Gear on Instagram and TA Gear on Facebook then and sign up to the email mailing list, then you can really get involved with all the gear that I'm going to be bringing out. Um, but yeah, late November now and you can see most of the leaves are starting to come down and it's going to be camping time and I'm going to start to take my packs out with me. And, and I've tested these already um, over the last few months, which is why we did the prototypes. But I'm really looking forward to getting out there and using this gear even more putting it to the test and I'll show you how I pack this with my actual bushcraft and camping gear in one of those overnight videos. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys following me on this journey, especially those who've been around since the early days of the bushcraft camp and prior to that, you know, just general overnight camping trips and things. We've had a lot more people join since then. So welcome to all the new people. Uh, I do appreciate all your support. Thank you guys and I'll see you soon.